and good morning YouTube another bright and sunny day here in Cheshire in the UK welcome to Simply Diagnostics before we start don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for the notifications you can also follow me on Twitter at PicoFlu on my Facebook page um, Simply Diagnostics Northwich comments and criticisms always welcome if you've got something to say put it down in the comment box below and uh, we'll get a conversation started thanks for watching good morning youtube today uh, bright and sunny sunday morning we're going to be running through a few of the basics of insulin the compression testing and using the wps 500 from Picascope automotive test vehicle today we've got is a 2012 hyundai i20 1.2 petrol and um, we've already you can see there we've already got the pico scope uh, set up we're going to be using the wps 500 and we're using the bosch dcu 220 ruggedized laptop we're using the gys 100 amp battery support unit just to keep a trickle charge on the battery while we're filming a brilliant piece of kit that is and um, you want one of them I think uh, John McGovern if you search for John McGovern on Facebook he's uh, he's selling those at the moment in the UK and we've got the the Picascope um, WPS 500 pressure transducer with with the standard hose and you can see on the end the, the Hyundai's got a very bit one of the very very small spark plugs and I'm actually using the adapter out of the AST um, compression testing kit just so that it'll actually fit in the spark plug we've got the spark plug from cylinder one removed we've got a plug in the end of the plug lead and um, going to going to earth um, earth through the exhaust and the, the, the engine so that we've not got any um, build up of uh, energy in the coil so we're not going to destroy the coil I've got the injectors connected so we've disabled fuel I've got going through connections I've got the Pico 4425 hooked up to the to my Bosch ruggedized laptop the channel A I've got um, battery connection to positive and negative battery Channel B, BNC lead over connected to the WPS 500. So we've got the we've got the big screen on a swivel mount in the in in the back of the van, and what that does that enables me to look at wiring diagrams, look at the scope on a big screen um, from the driver's seat if I need to, um, or from from outside the vehicle. It, ju it just means that I can see things nice and nice and clean, nice and easy. You can see we've got the the Pico Diagnostics uh, help up at the minute and all that's doing that's telling me how to connect it to the vehicle so let's get this thing hooked up and put the put the WPS adapter into the plug hole and screw it in now if you're using an adapter the spark for the for the spark plug hole. If you haven't, uh, I've not got all the modern connections. I was one of the first to get the WPS in the UK, and I've still not upgraded the kit. But it only needs to be hand tight, just so that the O-ring seals. If you do it any tighter, there's a danger that when you come to take the hose off, the adapter will actually stay in the plug hole. And believe you me, that's a job that you don't want to be tackling on a Sunday morning on your mother's car. And all we do then. We simply put the WPS 500 on top of the on top of the hose. A simple snap fit. We turn the WPS on. You can see it's going through its self check. That's it. We're all ready to go. We're on range one we've not got any any zoom or anything like that we want it just as it is and like I say then all we've got then that BNC lead comes all the way around connected to channel via the scope channel A blue lead 
coming round. One, bat one battery positive connection and battery negative connection. And what we do on the on the Bosch now, we'll select Picoscope Diagnostics. Starts up. Compression test. And the good thing about the Pico Diag software, you can also display raw data at the top if you want. We're going to be, it's a four cylinder, we're going to be using pressure. So now we have to put some information in. Right, so now all we've got to do is input the cylinder volumes and things like that. So now all we've got to do is crank the vehicle. see there we've roughly got the same compressions um, I had to check the uh, checkbox for compensate to compensate for the WPS because it wasn't giving me accurate readings without that but you see they're all roughly the same so that's another variation on the relative compression test that we did on the Honda FRV video but this time using the WPS transducer so now on to actual in cylinder waveform analysis using the PicoScope automotive software. Right, so we've now got the PicoScope, PicoScope automotive software um, running. First of all, we set up channel A on 20 volts, we're just monitoring battery voltage. Channel B, we want to select the WPS range 1. Go for a mid setting for, for now. See how see how that goes. In cranking, we probably want about 500 milliseconds per division, um, something like that. We'll crank the sample rate up. 500 milliseconds per division. Time base: three million samples per second. We'll start the scope running and we'll just give it a crank and see what happens, see what we get on the screen. Stop the scope. zoom function our window zoom we'll just zoom in on a couple of the events move the overview out of the way minimize that we don't really need to see that all right so now we've got a nice clean waveform and um, the first thing we do just to quickly have a have a quick look We've got the two, two compression peaks that we zoomed in on at 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation. We drag a ruler down roughly to the top of it. This is about 9.7 bar. Um, that's roughly equivalent to about 100 and, 150 psi, something like that. So that's significantly less than we saw with the Pico Diagnostic software, um, that was about 200 PSI. And bearing in mind the WPS doesn't have a Schrader valve in it, so what you're actually seeing is, is free running pressure. So I'm quite, I'm quite happy with that, that doesn't give me any, any cause, causes for concern. And what we can do is if, if we, um, we can quickly divide this up, 
using the rulers from the right hand side, the, the little green the little green dot there. Drag a root one ruler across roughly to TDC, which is the top of the compression peak on the first tower. Drag a second ruler across to the top of the um, second tower. You can see mine's automatically now divided it into four. To do that, you go down onto the bottom, onto rulers, and select the number of divisions you want. So whether if you're looking for different events um, being influenced from other cylinders or something like that, and it was a, not a four-cylinder engine or something like that, you can you can basically adjust it to what you want. But we're only interested in in the the, the four specific cycles here. So we've got um, the power stroke, um, the pistons coming down, and downward travel after the combustion event. Obviously with this we've got a pressure transducer and so there's no combustion taking place. So all this is, is really an expansion stroke and that will have a, um, an influence on the readings that we'll get because there isn't any combustion taking place. Then we've got our exhaust stroke, then we've got our induction stroke, and then finally we've got our compression stroke leading with the piston travelling uh, back up again. Um, and then we can, we can quickly zoom in. So really the, the areas of interest that we're looking at here is, is our peak pressures. We're looking for a nice symmetrical tower shape. You can see the, 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 the symmetry on that tower, on the two towers. Um, it's not leaning one way or the other. Um, that would give us a concern, that would that would indicate that there were in-cylinder problems. So a, a nice symmetrical shape on the compression towers, I'm quite happy with that. And then the other the other uh, events we're interested in really is, is the negative pressure pocket here, or the vacuum pocket, if you want to upset Frank. Um, you're looking at uh, this area here for the exhaust valve opening, this area here for the intake valve opening, this area here for the intake valve closing. Start off on, on, at the bottom here um, where the exhaust valve opens. It can give us quite a lot of information about the state of the engine. So we just zoom in. What we want to do first off is drop a ruler down. Down. We don't need to try and place that accurately. I want that on the zero line where there's zero pressure, zero vacuum. So highlight the box, hit zero and return. That will put that ruler there for us. So that, that line there now basically is, is zero pressure, zero vacuum. And the next ruler, we drag that down, put it roughly where the piston, obviously this is the piston travelling down, we put it roughly where the piston stops travelling down. What we can do, we can help ourselves a little bit here as well. We can actually apply a filter to the waveform, just by hitting the drop down menu where you select your probe and then activate filtering and that will clean it up considerably. So that, that just helps us really, that, that, that tidy things up and just lets us locate it you know a lot a lot easier then from the left hand side we can drag another ruler across we drag that over to bottom dead center to the 180 degree marker another ruler from the left hand side to roughly where where the um, the capture meets the bottom of the travel so roughly somewhere about there it doesn't it doesn't have to be dead accurate and what we're looking at, between bottom dead centre and, and, and where the pressure um, evens out, if you like, it stops its downward journey and starts its upward journey, we're looking to, for between 30 and 50 degrees before bottom dead centre. And you see ours is about 40. Um, but what, what, I'd, what I'd really want to, with, with valve timing, what you really want to see is the upward, upward slope here, yeah, uh, we always used to say that that needed to be, that upward slope, the midpoint of that upward slope um, needed to be around about bottom dead centre. You can see ours isn't, um, our, our timing's uh, 
a little bit different than that. I think a lot of that's to do with the high and high um, lean burn strategy. Um, it's actually showing that the, the, the exhaust timing's significantly advanced. We're, we're, at, we're at about 40 degrees there before bottom dead centre when that exhaust valve's opening. So it's, it's still within the th between the 30 and the 50 that we'd say. You can see this, uh, you know, it's this 20 degrees difference. There's, there's, there's quite a bit of, of advance there on that uh, exhaust valve timing, and a lot of that is to do um, with the, lean, the very, very lean running engines, these Hyundai engines. Um, but also, um, it could be a sign or, or an issue um, that we might have a little bit of valve problem there. This is an extremely low mileage. It's done 24,000 miles in six years, so it's an extremely low mileage car. Um, I would expect to see um, some sort of carbon build up um, w within this engine. But we are, like I say, we are within um, the 30 to 50 degree um, area that we'd, no we'd normally like to see. I'm moving. Moving on from that. If we go to look at um, where our intake valve opens, which which is this area here. I'll zoom in on that. Same sort of thing again. Yeah, so we're, this you notice now this is the 360 degree marker um, so the piston's actually at, at, at TDC here exhaust stroke so we'd want to bring a ruler across now onto TDC and then another ruler across to the midpoint of the, the down slope where the um, Obviously, the intake valves opening. Um, I'm, I'm really we want to see the midpoint. The midpoint of that downslope there needs to be about TDC plus plus 20 degrees, something like that. So, I'm happy with where the intake valve is opening. Right. So now, if we look at um, this area where our intake valve is closing and it's starting the compression stroke. Drop a ruler down to roughly to where it, it um, starts its journey up. Drag a ruler across onto bottom dead centre, 540 degree mark. Another ruler across. We want to be seeing about about 45 degrees, something like that. You can see there, about 45, about 45 degrees after bottom dead centre, the compression tower is, is starting to rise. Um, so again, I'm, I'm quite happy with where my intake valve is closing. Another thing we can look at is if we get, get, get rid of these rulers again. We examined the, the, the actual um, the exhaust area of the waveform. We've got one ruler on, on, on zero. And then the other one we can measure, we can actually measure the vacuum pocket or the negative pressure negative pressure pocket, the expansion pocket, whatever you want to call it. And that's about minus 400 millibar. Um, that's a little bit lower than I would expect to see, but bearing in mind we've got um, an extension piece coming from the cylinder, so the cylinder's a little bit different than it would be. We've had no compression um, on a running end on an actual engine with com with combustion taking place. You'd see that expansion pocket would be a bit a little bit deeper. But overall, it, it, it looks it looks fairly okay. It's not it's not giving me any rise for concern. 
And then if we look at this area here, this is this is where where we're looking when we're looking for blocked exhaust. You see that's still our zero line there. We drag that up, and measure measure the, the the maximum it gets to there, and that's 62 millibar. Um, just bear with me one second. I'll just do. I don't really normally work in millibars. Um, well, 68 is about one psi, so there's a little bit of an exhaust restriction. It could well be that the baffles are going slightly, but really you want that as close to zero as possible. But one one psi back pressure is not uh, not not surprising um, on this vehicle. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to restrict the exhaust. I'm going to save this as a reference waveform, and then I'm now. I'm going to restrict the exhaust. We'll get we'll get rid of these rulers. We don't need them anymore. I'll save that as a reference. So tools, reference waveform, channel B. We'll edit it. We'll have a different colour. We'll have black so we can see it. And we'll we'll just we'll just rename it. Um, Okay, so we'll save that. So I'm going to restrict the exhaust using the cone out of me uh, smoke bro smoke detector. So I'm just going to shove that up the tailpipe. I'm just going to do this test again. I'm going to um, this time I'm going to put a trigger on it. So we want channel B. Rising edge trigger. I'm going to set that at about. Well, we'll drag it over. Probably put it put it around around four bar something like. Maybe no. Let's let's do six bar. A little bit less time on the screen. We don't need as much time on the screen. I don't think. We'll set the scope running, and we'll see what happens. So we've got um, we've got three events there on uh, on screen. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to save that as a reference waveform. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to make it a different colour so I can see it. Black. We'll do a black. We'll just call that normal. And then what we'll do, we'll start the scope running, I'll, I'll block the exhaust up again and we'll start it. So you can see now we've actually got, you know, the, the waveforms are, are roughly where the other ones were. what I would want to see there, I would expect to see a, a higher rise, I tell you what, let's get some more time on the screen. And we'll try that again. There's 
zoom in on that. It's better, it's more defined. So we drop drag a drag a drag a ruler down. Hands aren't working, I'm freezing. Set that to the zero line. And then a second ruler down. Right, so looking at looking at this exhaust pressure here, you can see um, 68 millibars. It's not actually increased uh, that much, even though I blocked the exhaust up at the tailpipe, simply because there's such a massive volume of air in within the exhaust that it would take so long under cranking um, for that uh, that air to be pressurised to actually impact the waveform that we've got there. Bearing in mind it was a block catalytic converter, something like that. Uh, you would see you'd see a significant increase in this pressure. Um, the only way I could do that was in, if we take the exhaust manifold off and literally put a plate between the exhaust manifold and the and the cylinder head. I'm not prepared to do that on my own car, so we'll wait for another day until we get to one that's actually got a restricted cap to show you that. If you're after um, a good resource, a good learning resource um, to learn about compression waveform testing and that. This is an excellent resource. It's ATS Automotive Test Solutions and the web address is uh, automotivetestsolutions.com forward slash anatomy of the compression waveform. And this one, it's a, it really is a fantastic learning resource. You've got um, Basically, it gives you pictures, it gives you an in-depth explanation. I'll just show you um, the stuff I was quoting before about cam timing or intake ramps, exhaust ramps, um, the actual various part, portions of the compression waveform. Like I say, it's ATS is an absolute fantastic resource, so uh, credit and kudos to them. I hope they don't mind me using it. Brilliant, brilliant resource. Alright, so that was a brief overview looking at the uh, in cylinder pressure with the WPS 500. Um, there's, there's loads of loads of videos out there um, if you want to, you know, really get into in cylinder pressure transducer uh, analysis and use it in your daily diagnostics. Um, some really really good videos Erico South Main Auto he's done done a few um, Paul Danner Scanner Danner he's, uh, he's done a few uh, we've got a police helicopter buzzing over us at the minute so sorry for the noise um, there's yeah there's, there's plenty of resources out there um, for, for you know if, if you want to learn you want to improve what I would say is the way you are going to do it um, is just by practice. Grab as much known good as you possibly can, um, as many known good waveforms as you can, and then when you actually come across a bad one, you'll know what a bad one looks like because you obviously you know what a good one looks like. Just looking at uh, intake manifold vacuum on a running engine. So I'll go through the setup. Set up for this, we've got the WPS, um, we've got it now on range 2 and I've got the, the, the normal hose connected up and I've just gone straight onto the, the brake vacuum servo pipe um, just to measure it there. Now this engine at idle runs about 21 inches of mercury um, and that would be roughly about minus 700 millibar, something, something like that. Um, so that's the physical connection on the car. Right, so as it as we go um, scope wise, so what we're gonna do channel A. We've got WPS range two. We've got about uh, 100 milliseconds division time on the screen, um, million samples and I've actually got it um, plus or minus 1.4 bar. 
So we set the scope running and we'll start the vehicle. Right, we can zoom in on this a number of ways. We can use the, the zoom window tool. We can just look at that portion there. Or we can actually use the zoom function that's built into the WPS. But bear in mind, if you use the actual built-in zoom function on the WPS, it will skew the pressure readings. Right, so what we can do now, we can use we can use a second channel now to see if we can get those those in induction humps to actually tie in with anything. So what I'm going to use here, I'm just going to basically use the inductive secondary pickup. I'm going to put that onto channel B. Select the pickup from the drop down menu. Right, so what we've done there now, we've got the WPS on, on channel A, um, on intake manifold vacuum, we've got channel B, we've got a secondary uh, ignition pickup um, with a trigger to just to steady the image. And what we can all what we can also do now is if we go on to the bottom here on the, the blue square at the bottom, the scaling, we can just increase the scaling. So we've done it to five times, we can drag it back up onto the onto the screen so we can see it. We can actually see what's we can see what's going on. And you see there though this is obviously um, So there's not really a lot of value for us for us looking at that because obviously this is a good engine. Um, but let's see what happens if we introduce a misfire. Let's see what happens on this uh, on this waveform if we introduce a misfire. So what, what we're actually looking at here, each, each, each one of these pulses is um, is a valve event that's happening within within the uh, within the cylinder within the engine, um, and you can see there's there's a, there's nothing nothing there at all that would give me any any cause for concern. So the next thing now is we'll go on to the exhaust and we'll see if we put the WPS in the exhaust and we'll see what effect that would have. Right, we'll try that again now the helicopter's gone. So, right, so now quickly um, what we're going to do now we're going to um, use the WPS on the exhaust just for looking at misfire detection. Um, so here's the setup, this is what we've got. We've got the WPS 500, we've got it on uh, range 3 with the tailpipe adapter and literally all I'm going to do is shove it up the pipe like so. Settings wise, 
Um, I'm just going to set it to 69 millibar. Um, so we've got range 3, 69 millibar, 200 milliseconds per division. The scope's running, we'll see what happens. See there, 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 the exhaust pulses. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go to the front of the car and I'm going to introduce a misfire. So you can see now we've got uh, we've introduced a single cylinder misfire on cylinder number one. What you can see is the pressure's dropping down here, and you can I don't know where they keep foot 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 foot, but that um, the drop in pressure there at the tailpipe it's the same as the old dollar bill trick where you put a dollar bill up to the tailpipe and. Uh, Every foot, you know, every every time you get a dead miss, it'll suck the dollar bill back into the tailpipe. And then if we go and put the put the plug back on, run it again now, nice and smooth. And what that what that actually said that gives me another another very valuable way. Of just doing a basic health check on an engine. Nice even, nice even pressure pulses there. Uh, nothing, to, nothing to worry about. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this brief insight into um, uses of WPS 500 pressure transducer both in cylinder, um, intake manifold vacuum and exhaust pressure pulses. Like I say it's, it's just a, a, an insight into into what's possible. Um, you've seen how I set it up, how the software works. Um, any questions at all don't forget to leave a comment below and we can go into it in more detail. But once we've once we've got this grounding now when I actually get a problem car um, I won't really need to go through setup as much and, and the uses. So, like I say, if you enjoyed the uh, enjoyed the video, leave us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Um, follow me on Twitter at Pico Flu, and jump over onto my business page on Facebook at Simply Diagnostics Northwich. Thanks very much for watching. You have an awesome day.